back with the CRX and today we're going to be doing the drive shaft outer CV boot. Um, I've already slackened off the 19mm uh, wheel nuts and then I just need to undo this 32mm um, hub nut and the first thing you would do for a car with standard wheels was, would be you take out the centre but these don't actually have centres um, and then you've got this bit here this is the bit that's quite often indented you usually come in here and, and get rid of whatever someone's done to indent it but these actually don't seem to have much of an indent so it should spin anyway then you just grab your 32mm uh, socket and then try and undo it okay. handbrake's not very good so we're going to have to pull the handbrake up further mate. Sammy just had to cheat it a bit by, uh, he put it in first, but mainly he just put his foot on the brake. And that's um, undone the nut, which is good. And you can basically just take the nut right off. There we go. There it is. Quite rusty inside there. Um, and then what we need to do is jack the car up, support the car with an axle stand and then take the wheel off. So here we've got it jacked up on the jacking point and it's supported there and I leave the jack in there so that it can't go anywhere. And then just take off the wheel nuts off. There's a little spigot ring thing that's come out the back. Out the back. So here you can see the outer drive shaft boot, and it's got some oil. Apparently, it's, apparently it's split somewhere. I can't really see where it's split yet, but either way, we're going to be taking it off. And uh, here's the inner one, looking a bit more healthy. But the inner ones are usually better off because they're not moving around as much. So either way, I'm going to take this off. What do I need to do to take it off? There's lots of different methods you'll probably find on how to do that, but the way I do it on these cars is I do um, anything I can not to disturb the ball joints. So I will, will not need to take that one off. Well, why is that? It's because often when you split a ball joint, you split the um, rubber um, boot on it, and then you're in the process then having to replace that at the same time. So I don't really want to do that. So what I'll do is I will drop down the anti-roll bar drop link which is easy 12 mils um, I will undo this long bolt here I'll undo the 14 mil which holds the um, lower wishbone uh, which is around the back of there um, so that's that and I'll undo these 17 mil for the, um, the rod that goes to the front there and that will probably be that and then this whole um, thing will be moving then and I can just move it back um, prise it from the inner end there and knock it from the outside end here and, and we'll be away basically that's pretty much it so I've got a 12 mil socket here 12 mil stopping it rotating here and then you find out let's just see if I can get on it find out someone's got an aftermarket 13 mil anyway so I've got a 12 mil here you see that yeah and uh, thir this happens to be a 13 mil, but standard would be um, 12. You can see, there you go. That's off like that. And this is from the lower, so it just goes up like that. And this is there's the nut. So it's got a nylock on there. Very nice. A 17 mil um, socket here, and a 17 mil spanner there. First, I'm just going to try and crack this off. Good, it's moving a bit. It's what you want. I'm hoping I can just blast it off with this impact. Now I've taken some torque off it. Okay, it's off there. And I can just knock it back. If you watch this one. Got a screwdriver here. There you go. That's the bolt out of there. 
Got the nut and the bolt. That's there. And the method behind the madness is you remove that and then you've got much more access for these two 17 mils that are there. Right, so I'm undoing these two um, 17 mil uh, bolts. Can you see that, Andy? Yeah. And that one. And what we'll do is we'll take those both out um, completely. And um, once they're able to spin my, my fingers, I'll do that. But I've also got a ratchet spanner here, so this can be pretty useful in here. So just take both of those out fully. There's the 14 mil um, around the back here that I've been taken out. Right, so there's the long bolt out of here. This one. And then this. This should drop down there. I'll just have to prise it out a bit probably. There you go. And now you see I've got full kind of articulation. This has just come out. Sometimes you've got to um, put the nut back on there and hit that, but that's come right out here, like so. And then, see, I haven't had to undo this ball joint, I haven't had to undo that ball joint, I haven't had to mess around with the track run, and none, none of those ball joints have been messed with. And that's why I really like that method of doing it. And then, you come in here. Yeah, Come in here, you can just prise between the casing and there. Let me show you what that looks like. It's suffering a bit of lack of space here. But so that's basically where you go and uh, I'll just pull the drive shaft out. Backed out there in the end I'll just use a screwdriver because I had more space for that and hold that. And then this whole drive shaft will come out. Weedle it out like that. And because I've got it jacked up nice and high on this side I'm not uh, losing any gearbox fluid. Oil. And we'll take this to the bench and have a look at it. So I think the, there's a hole in it there in the boot. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Somehow it's been nipped. I don't, don't know how. But other than that, it's not looking too bad, which is good because if it was properly ripped and you had loads of stuff in there, you'd be pretty worried that you've probably worn your drive shaft, um, you know, the bearings inside it. Um, but this way, you know, I think we're probably going to get away with just a boot change, which is quite nice. So, what I'm going to do is um, not mess around too much with this, hopefully. And uh, grab a screwdriver, this one. And I'm just going to come in here and pluck. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? Right. That's just, Whoa. that's just come straight off anyway. So this, this is all, I think this could be, not an original, but it's been, it's been on there a while. And then, uh, so that's the outer one. And then this one. So it's just useful to, sure I think. sorry. I think this might do a similar. That. Let's get that out of there. Put that back. And then this is the same deal. That's off there like that. That's all nice. And then we can just uh, cut this off again. We'll just use these. 
and aircraft snip, snippy. It's a good point to see kind of what's the condition of it. Good actually. Not bad. Really gunk it up. I think it needs more oil in it, yeah. It's not super smooth in there. This is my brand new Sealy Mechanical CVJ um, CV boot tool. It's BSL104. I actually had a problem with the previous one um, and they've sent me a new one uh, which is really nice of them because um, I'm not receiving any money from these guys, you know, this, this is the tool I bought myself. But, uh, the floor is a, a bit of a problem with the last one, and they sent me another one. Oh, so this is the claw. <laughs> um, the all new claw that's not done anything bad yet. So, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so happy to have a new claw. It was the old one. Basically, it had some large mechanical failure. Let's <laughs> just say that. Um, but, you don't need one of these. I've got one of these. And um, for these, you need the stretch boot. This is by JR. Um, again, not being paid by JR. I just use their stuff quite regularly, and they're a very good company. And um, you can buy the stuff on eBay. Um, if you didn't have one of these, um, all you need to do is just knock the end of the drive shaft off, uh, put the new um, boot on, knock the drive shaft back on. It. No, it's not that difficult. The problem you do have is the little um, circlip. And um, if you've got a problem with your circlip, um, you know, you can have all types of issues. And me and Andy had some really bad issues with one car. <laughs> <laughs> the circlip was never right after it went back on and the drive shaft fell, fell off three times when he drove around the corner. It was just was it just three? Uh, I think it was just three. You know. Anyway, either way, it was pretty painful. I don't know if you remember that, Andy. I remember it really well. Uh, hold on to that. Okay, cool. Hold it your pocket. So that, that tightened onto there. Okay. And then all you do, I say all you do. And this is a this is a stretch boot. This isn't is a it? stretch That's boot. That's different to one that doesn't stretch. Yeah, you can't use this with non-stretches. Uh, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Not even if you ask nicely. Not even if you ask nicely, mate. And then have it in first gear ratio. So slow. And I'm obviously fairly nervous now. What happens if you do it with um, one that's a non-stretch one? Bad things. Okay. Stop asking me awkward questions. <laughs> Get those shears <laughs> away from the whole scenario. <laughs> but that can go wrong, can't it? Yeah. Yeah. You only need what you need, you know? Yeah. Look, there you go. We're in. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Go backwards. Or forwards in this case. And now what I want to do is take this out of this vise. Why is that? Because obviously I'm not going to get it over here. You can uh, snag it on. Watch out. Whoa, watch out. Let me out. Hang set. Hang set. Wait, 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 wait. Don't come my way. Will you go my way? You've got to make sure you get this thing in the hole. Is that right? Yeah. If you're there, you're in. You're in the club. Now, this thing should pretty much fall off here. Fall. Yeah, a bit, a bit tight. Yeah, but I can get it off there. It's just getting it off here. There you go, it's nice. And that just releases, releases it. Release the claw. Release the claw. And that's on there without having to take anything off. Great. That's pretty nice. But first, yeah. what I want to do is pack that whole thing full of grease. Great. So come around the other side again. Watch out for the gearbox that's in pieces. Like that. It'll give me two little sachets of grease here. 
seems like these being used for absolutely everything. <laughs> <laughs> you spread butter on toast with them as well. Yeah. So, look here. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to pack it in. Alu gobby. Oh, okay. You see when you pack it in, it kind of forces itself round. And then I'm basically, I know this has already got some grease in, so I'm going to probably put at least one of these things in, like I've just kind of done. Excuse me. Can you put too much grease in it? Uh, oh, damn. So, can you put too much grease in it? Can you put too much grease in it? I mean, yeah, you probably can. I don't think I've ever had that problem, but... What's the... What's the issue if you put too little grease in it? Well, basically you're just going to wear this thing really badly. You see, it's not... Well, it wears out. I think this draft shaft has got some wear in it. You're going to send it, right? It's your drive shaft. Yep. Are you going to send it? Yep. Oh, then. Okay, so you can kind of hear... You can kind of hear you how this thing is... Yeah, you can kind of hear Basically it. When you, you can massage it in, right? Yeah, I'm just going to massage all the oil into it. It's not bad, it's just this is not a new drive shaft. I think that's what I'd say about it. 20 years older. It's, I don't know. You know what I mean? It doesn't sound great. It doesn't sound great which is a bit poor, but I think to pass this MOT, well this was only advisory actually. Yeah. So this, this, this drive shaft will last a bit. I think on the horizon is a new drive shaft, or at least a new end. Um, but this, this will do the job for now. Yep. And, uh, you know, we just want a clean bill of health on the MOT. And, uh, and then onwards from that, we'll probably just buy another drive shaft. So, you know, but you really, you, you don't want to be hearing a lot coming from your drive shaft. It's not horrific, but it's obviously a little bit on the warm side of life. Then what you can do is just uh, wipe off the excess from here. Quite a bit of grease there. Just round, just round the sides, clean them up a little bit. Okay. Then uh, get the boot. You're going to slide the boot up, put it in place. Again, just wipe off any excess grease. And then you just want to put this, see here, you want to put it where the, the old one was basically. That will be the right place for it. There we go. That's in there like that. Everything's happy. Everything's kind of clean. And you can give it a final clean at the end. Um, and then I'm going to introduce you to a brand new tool for me. Which I'm quite excited about. It's there. And you're not sponsored by these guys. I'm not either. sponsored by anyone. But this is a CV drive shaft boot pliers, 240 millimeter. Yeah. Have you already got one of these? No. Nope. So the idea behind these is what you need to do to get these tight is to pinch them. So I'll show you this going on. Yep. Um, so just get this. Put it here. Put it around like that, and then the idea is you've got to, you've got to put it. Um, it's kind of got this little these teeth in here. So the first thing you want to do is try and get it as tight as you possibly can um, on there. So something like that. What do you do without this tool? Well, basically, what you do with that tool is you've got to pinch pinch it with some pliers. And what or happens like for that? that sometimes it's just annoying. Really annoying. You can end up messing up. Uh, yeah, and then you've got to get find another one of these clips. So with this, what it has is has the ability to pinch, but also push at the same time, right? Pinch and pinch. I've never used these before, so. Read the instructions. So, no. So here, you see how all these teeth have to be in. That's as far as that will go. Pretty much, that's important. So then. Get in here, 
like so. I'm going to be holding it there. Ready? I'm ready. Are you saying that to Look at that. You've done Look it. Look at that. Look at how it's doing it. You've done it. Nearly. It's not the whole way yet. It's pinching and pushing then. This thing is pinching. Let's see how it's done. Okay, oops. That's, that's done it. Yep. So that's quite a nice job. I'll just uh, tidy it up a bit. Oh, I don't know. I've probably overdone it. So you think First, it's done a nice job then? Yeah, it's pretty much. It's quite hard to do it otherwise. You knock it down. And then what I'm going to do is just grab a little hammer and just. Easy. Easy, Easy on the wrapper. So that. So that's eating them up somewhat. So. Now after seeing that job, I don't think the maker of the tool is going to sponsor me anyway, so there you go. Why not? I've blown it. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've blown it. You dropped it. I dropped it. Okay. So let's give me another shot, please. Yeah, it's your first attempt. Uh, silver line. Give me another shot, please. So just make sure that's in the whole way round. It's got to be the whole way to the shoulder, if you like. Give me another shot of this. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so this might be a better angle actually. It kind of shows you what you're doing. Right, we'll just cut the other one out. Right, right. cut the other one. Let's have a look. I think you're on my way a bit, mate. Sorry. People want to see this. It could be life changing. Is it too much pressure? Should we just do it after? This one has been done probably even better than the other one. But again, it's done It's done quite nicely. It's managed to fold the whole thing over. And then again, I just come in here and tap that side down and tap that side down. And that's done, that's done a good job. It's quite a tidy I'm, job. I'm happy with that. Um, undo it from here. Um, and then just give it a bit of you know, a wipe up. And the spindle. And the spindle. Yep. Spindle. <laughs> I'm going to call that spline, mate. But spline. You can call it whatever you want. Finland spline. So this is the new CV boot on there. I've just seen this one's a bit past its best as well. It's deteriorated, not cracked. It's going back yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's not cracked. It will crack. I think you need a new drive shaft probably at some point anyway. So that's what I'm going to say to myself. And on that note... It's going back in. You've got to go back in, mate. You've got more service to do. So, thin like that. It needs to kind of go in here, go underneath here. But a funny journey it's got to go on. The spline and there. And you pick this out. Good. That's in. Great. And if you saw it going. And how do you know it's in? Well, you can just do that. Do you hear that click? Yeah. And then you can hear that spinning, spinning the drive, yep. the uh, diff. So that's in there like that, lovely. And then you just got to. Um, I'm probably going to get a bit of copper slip. You don't have to do this by any means. But I have had situations before, actually with a CRX, that. Um, Basically, the uh, the dry shaft didn't want to come out, and it was very, very annoying. Do you call this your signature? Yeah. You know, I've been there before. <laughs> you get a bit of copper slip in place. So just a little bit, hardly anything, but it's just nice for the next person who comes behind you, which could even be yourself. And then, especially if I'm planning on doing it again. So that's in there like that, that's just there, 
with that I'll just get the nut and I'll just especially as we know we had issues with getting this nut off as in it seemed to require a hell of a lot of torque so I'm just going to get a bit of copper slip and just place it on the inside of this nut like so and then we'll just get started there so here I've got 14 mil I've just put this um, lower control um, in place and control on in place just wheel it into the right area and you shove it in and it's easiest to do this first because then you've got most control over it I can move it side to side and get it located sometimes when you put the um, this bar going to the front in it's quite painful to get that done so I'll just quickly with the ratchet spanner get that in and started and then we've got these um, 17 mils here so the next thing is I'm just going to do both those up by hand the next thing after you've just done them up by hand is you can get this ratchet spanner in here and you can just make sure they're um, approaching tight obviously you're not going to torque it up with a ratchet spanner but that's that's pretty good for now oh, which goes from uh, the suspension uh, fork um, into the lower control arm and that just pushes through you can just get a hammer it's through there and then just do that it's uh, 217 mils I'm just going to do a quick bolt check so um, this bolt here and this one here can you see that? yeah okay Four, they're, they're two um, 17 mils for the rod going to the front of the car. And I've got a 14 mil here. This is for the lower control arm. That's the way up yet. Yeah. So that's tight. That's good. So the inner um, low control arm's done. Um, these two um, for the track control rod, they're done. And I've got this uh, 17 mil uh, for the bolt that goes through um, the suspension fork and uh, through the lower control arm. So I'll just make sure that's tight. I've just got a uh, crowbar here. I'm just pushing down the anti roll bar. And then I can just put this in here and then just do up the um, drop link uh, like that. I've just got 13 mil. Well you don't want to overdo that because uh, you just want to compress a certain amount. So that's that done. And the last thing I need to do now is uh, do this um, 32mm up a bit more than it is. Just quickly nip it for now. And then uh, we will put the wheel back on, drop it to the floor and uh, torque that up properly. The wheel's on, pump it up. Okay. Drop it down slowly. And then I'm going to have to go in the car so I can uh, talk this uh, bolt up with a 32 in the braking car. Yeah, well. Put it in first and brake. No, you don't need to. Ready? Yeah. Have you done the hub nut? I've done the hub nut, but the last thing you need to do for a proper job is you need to put a little notch in here and usually I would have to take the take the wheel off and jack it up again but I think I'm going to get away with just knocking it there so I'll just grab the right thing. Okay, so just a little knock here. And see what that does? I'll just do it a bit more than that. Is it stops it from being undone. So that's it. That's all you need to do. 
and then when you come to undo it again if you need to you just get a smaller screwdriver than this and then just knock in there and it'll spray it out and the final thing is just do the wheel nuts up uh, torque them up and that is how you do uh, an outer drive shaft boots on a on the CRX and lots of other Civics and Hondas as well. One of the other things we failed the MOT on was um, the rear indicator wasn't working and I've fixed it now but if I can just quickly show you how I went about fixing it. So first of all if you go around to the front of the car and if you um, put the left indicator up okay so this is this is the situation we had before and I basically just switched my multimeter onto voltage okay and stuck um, the other pin on the earth and if you look at the screen of the multimeter that's what happens it kind of works its way down to zero and back up to about uh, seven volts I think it sometimes says maybe if I get a bit of a shinier bit of this but that's basically what was happening okay so I was thinking okay that's uh, interesting the other side, when I took the bulb out, did exactly the same thing. So you think, okay, that's good. I've got voltage there. The next thing you want to do is um, con get go into continuity. Okay. Um, then stick one side on an earth. There. The other side here. You can hear that's that's a good earth. Okay. So then I'm very confused. Um, I, so you've got voltage, yes, you've got uh, an earth, yes, and the other thing you think, well, if I've got voltage, maybe my ampage is low. I can't actually measure it on this, because I think the amps are pretty low on this, or it wouldn't measure it for whatever reason. Either way, so if your ampage is low, then your resistance is probably high. So then you think, right, high resistance, interesting. So you go in here, and I had a look through here. And this is um, just some dodgy little wiring thing someone's done, but it's actually, I've, I've resoldered that, so that's nothing bad here. And you think, okay, another job. Let's look in here. And you look in here. Can you see how blue it is yeah, there? Yeah. Let me just get the, the light so we can really have a good look in there. Can you see? Yeah. It's all blue and corroded. So I was like, turn, turn it off a second, eh? So... I was thinking that's interesting that's all blue so disconnected the battery and then got this little screwdriver and I got down to here and I was scratching the uh, contact the kind of corrosion off the, um, the contacts in there and then I just plugged it back in I uh, got the, the bulb I was using I, think it's, I don't know if it's this one or not but uh, the bulb Tuck the bowl back in and then just put the uh, left indicator back on. <laughs> not, that, not that bowl. Oh, it's this bowl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go on, left indicator. <laughs> there we go. Either way. <laughs> like a dream. Like a dream. <laughs> so you can see here it's still a bit flaky. Probably if I move that around. But do you see how I can stop it from happening or not? Yeah. So there's still a bit of crap in this indicator. I think actually the pin is slightly bent as well. So what I'll do is I'll turn it all off again. Okay, I can just about make it work like that, but that's not what you want if you go over a bump or whatever. So it's all to do with that pin on the indicator um, and the little connection harness. So I'm just going to make that mint and put it all back together. And finally, I'll have fixed my problem. But you can see it's a not perfect yet. So after I cleaned the um, contact I noticed that it was a little bit, the pin was a little bit bent round as well. So what I've done is straighten up some needle nose pliers and now it works and even if I pull the connector one way or the other it's working. So that's basically your fix. Um, just think of it logically. I at one point thought that oh, maybe the wiring to the front of the car was, was wrong but it wasn't um, it was just basic corrosion on the contact. It's going to happen in these old cars anyway. So there we go. Indicator works. I think we're ready for an MOT now, Andy. Yes. So <laughs> I'm going to bang it for an MOT. Uh, fingers crossed. I mean, it failed the other MOT, and I've, I've fixed everything on that list. So I can't really see why it would fail now. 
we're just going to try our luck. Fingers crossed. And fingers crossed, yeah.